Hi, my name is Marianne Gerber. Tanning beds were always a part of my life. My mother owned a salon. And it wasn't until I was going to get married and moved out that I realized, well, I'm going to be this bride and I'm going to be in this beautiful white dress and my God, I can't walk down a, you know, an aisle without a tan. I started tanning and realized how much better I was feeling about myself having a tan. Obviously very vain about my looks, you know, 20 years old. And then at 24, my husband had just bought me a brand new tanning pass. This is about the time I'm going to sometimes three times a week, which is the, the max I'd ever been. I had this mole on my cheek that was getting bigger and had more of a red hue to it. And I went to a plastic surgeon, again, because I was vain, and I didn't want anybody to touch me besides someone who was an absolute professional. Went in and he told me I had three stitch, I'd get three stitches. And the end of that week, I got a phone call from them and they said, Marianne, we have some, some bad news for you. So we have the biopsy results and it's melanoma. And I remember just sitting on the phone for a while and going, well, you, you mixed my biopsy up with somebody else. He said, no, this, you know, this is yours. I said, no. You mix my biopsy up with somebody else. It's the old man across the hall, you know, because those are the people who get skin cancer. The people who've been in the sun their entire lives and they're old and they are decrepit and they don't care. I'm 24 years old and I'm a girl. How could I have skin cancer? A few days later, I was in an oncologist's office, which is a cancer specialist. And two days later after that, I was under the knife for surgery. It took me a really long time to get where I am now. It, it was about a year after the surgeries that I literally was a hermit in my house because I'd go to work and I'd go home. Because anytime I'd venture outside of those two places, people would ask me what had happened because the, the scars were so horrific. And you know, for two months after, I couldn't hold my head up, my neck and my, my muscle tissue. and people would say, did you get in a car accident? And I'm like, no, no car accident. I, oh, I had skin cancer. I'm literally trying to convince people I had skin cancer because they didn't believe me. You know, I'd, I'd joke with people. And I remember one year for Halloween, I was a biker and I was like, yeah, I totally got in this knife fight. People believed me. I told the kid I had been attacked by a bear. Totally believed it. Like just these most random things that people believed and I don't know how they, you know, they couldn't believe skin cancer but they could believe all these other crazy things. They call it the healthy tan or the healthy glow which is the biggest oxymoron because being tan is nothing more than your skin screaming at you that it's in pain. That's what a tan is doing. It's showing you that there's damage happening and it's trying to protect itself. There's nothing less, nothing more. It's not healthy. It's literally a red flag from your skin screaming, stop doing what you're doing. And skin, as we all know, has to last. It's the forest with us for the rest of our life. So if you're going to ruin something, ruin your toenail polish because ruining your skin, it doesn't come back. It doesn't change. It doesn't get to get better. You cut things out and it's disfiguring. So for those of you who, who think that this is something that definitely won't happen to you, it, it's not me, it's somebody else, it's my neighbor, it's the girl down the street, it's the boy, it's the old man, you're basically playing a game of Russian roulette. Loaded gun. Yeah, you might make it out alive, but why is it worth that chance? What makes it worth it?